Changing your car's oil filter a couple of times a year is an easy way to prolong the life of your engine. The oil pump forces oil through the filter to the moving parts in the engine. The filter's job is to block dirt and metal debris from getting in between those parts and causing engine damage. They make many oil filter parts from steel coil, a sheet of steel on a roll. They start by unwinding the roll and feeding the coil into a press. The press contains a series of dies, each of which progressively stamps the steel into the shape of the specific part they're making. This press is churning out tapping plates, part of the component on the end of the oil filter that screws onto the car's engine. Hot off the press, the tapping plates travel on a magnetic conveyor to the welding station. There, a robotic arm loads them onto the welding carousel. But before any welding begins, a nozzle applies sealant around the rim of each plate. This is to fill any gaps left between the parts after welding. A robot now welds the tapping plate to another steel part called the bottom ring. This ring will hold the gasket, the rubber seal that prevents oil from leaking out as it travels through the filter into the engine. The welded parts, known as the bottom assembly, now go onto a machine that cuts a thread pattern through the center. This will enable the oil filter to be screwed onto the engine. Another press, meanwhile, produces the oil filter's steel body, called the canister. The dies first stamp out a rough canister shape, then they reduce the diameter and make the can taller. Then they cut off the excess. Elsewhere in the factory, another machine cuts and perforates pieces of tin-plated steel coil and rolls them into tubes. We'll see where those tubes go shortly. Yet another machine prepares the filter's key component, a filter paper that works like a fine sieve, trapping dirt, carbon and soot. First, the machine pleats the paper so that it'll fit inside the canister. Next, the machine cuts the continuous ribbon of pleated paper into lengths. Then it folds each piece into a circle, fastening the ends with a steel clip. The next machine assembles what's called the filter cartridge. It places each filter paper over a tube. The tube's job is to reinforce the paper against the force of the oil pumping through it. The next machine glues a capping disc on each end of the filter paper to hold the tube in place. A heater cures the glue. Now for the final assembly. As the canisters go by upside down, automated arms insert the filter cartridges. A worker then puts a thin rubber disc on top of each cartridge. This disc will prevent the oil from draining out of the filter. Now for those bottom assemblies we saw them making earlier. A worker positions one on each canister. Then a machine called a seamer folds its edge down, forming a rim, just like the rim of a soup can. Now the conveyor turns the filters right side up as they file by five nozzles spraying powder paint. An infrared oven dries the paint in about 90 seconds. Then a printing machine stamps on the product information. The conveyor now turns the filters upside down again as they travel to the gasket inserter. Its automated plungers insert a gasket into each bottom ring. These automotive oil filters are finally finished and ready to do the dirty work.